This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Health One. So, status epilepticus, um, seizure activity that lasts longer than five minutes or multiple seizures uh, where there's not um, a level of consciousness like return in between. So, those patients you would consider, you know, more of a medical emergency. Um, the longer a patient seizes, the worse functional outcomes they have. Um, we know this, the harder it is to break the seizure, um, the more risk of permanent brain damage. So it's super important to break that seizure as soon as possible. Um, and it's harder to break the seizure because throughout the course of status, um, you have, your GABA receptors will internalize into the cell. And so the longer um, a patient seizes, um, you have a window of opportunity in the beginning where uh, benzos are going to be super effective, and that's why we use them first. Um, however, when those GABA receptors start to internalize, you don't have GABA receptors anymore for those benzos to bind to. So your seizures start to become refractory, right? Um, so how do we treat first line agent is going to be what? Adivan, yeah. So um, benzos we use um, to break the seizure, and the best way to do that is using large doses also. Um, I think we are guilty a lot of the times for using small baby half a milligram, one milligram doses, but really um, the data is using large doses up front. Uh, we are nervous of using large doses because of respiratory depression, all that stuff. Um, but data has really shown that if you use large doses up front, you're less likely to cause respiratory depression, you're going to break that seizure, and you're going to give less benzos over time. Um, and these patients are less likely to need to be intubated. So what dose would you give for Ativan? How big is the person? Adult size patient. Four milligrams. Yay! <laughs> Slam How up. often do we get four milligrams? As often as you need to. <laughs> How? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me repeat doses. Yeah. yeah, so fixed dose, four milligram <laughs> IV okay. Ativan is a great starting point. Um, what if you don't have IV access? What can we use? Yeah. Well, yeah. So I am an intranasal. What drug can we give? First, Ed. What dose would you give? Seven point five. Fixed dose, ten milligrams, is probably the most effective. So anyone over forty kilos really um, should be getting ten milligrams IM. Um, so benzos first, and then hopefully we break the seizure. Um, if we don't, then we'll have to go to something else. Um, if we do break the seizure, we'll still have to use something else, right? So um, our second line agents are typically three different options. Um, you got Keppra, Valproate, and Phosphenitoin. Um, up until recently, there wasn't really any great data of why we use one over the other. Um, and s there was a trial in November um, that came out called the ESET trial that really looked at these three agents and saw that they're equally as effective um, with similar adverse effects. So the interesting thing was the phosphonatoin, the valproate, we use standard loading doses that we commonly use in the clinical practice. Kepra, what dose do you think they get? A gram? No. Yeah, way higher. So they use 60 mg per keg weight base dose up to 4,500 milligrams. So essentially, any adult patient was getting at least three grams starting off. Um, and so I think we're going to start to see higher doses, um, and that's going to become more standard in clinical practice. Um, I think the, the epilepsy guidelines are going to be adopting these higher doses as well. And then here at Swedish, we are going to be changing the way we give Keppra. Um, so instead of the nice, convenient packs um, we keep in Pixis, which won't be a permanent thing. Um, those will be getting taken away from us. We're going to start compounding Keppra in um, syringes and being able to give them as a push dose. So more to come on that. Um, but really, Keppra is my favorite because um, it has really essentially no contraindications, no adverse, mild or adverse effects versus the other two, and then um, really no drug interactions. So, um, and we're going to have it up here in Pixis. It'll be... Um, kind of like our ketamine syringes? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so, the, if those don't work, then what do you have? What do you have to do? 
propofol, like really high dose propofol? Yeah. So essentially, if none of those options work, we're going to intubate our patients. Um, propofol, Versed drips, um, pentobarb, they'll use in the ICU probably. Uh, but then there's also some good data using ketamine as well, which is kind of interesting um, that we could potentially consider using earlier on. But yeah. We are on a quest to provide the world with free medical education. Please help us out by rating us on iTunes, following us on social media, and subscribing to our newsletter at emergencymedicalminute.com.